Greetings, ladies and gentle fauna. Today we have Alice in Chains, Rain When I Die, Campfire. Campfire could mean a lot of different things. The purpose of today's video is mostly selfish. I want to understand the nuts and bolts of this song at a basic level, so to speak, in preparation for tomorrow's video, which will be yet another version of this song. Hence, I don't have any names to shout out for this questionable idea of mine, so I will simply thank Mr. Eric Masters and Mr. Andrew Hill for signing up for the <laughs> Patreon supporter of the Cause Club. Gentlemen, thank you for your support. And if you would like to find out what that's all about, the link, of course, will be in the description. I have my guitar tuned one half step down because I was working it out along with the song. Of course, you don't have to do that. You could just play it in standard tuning, but you might want to in the interest of following along with this video. Instead of Eddie 8 Dynamite Goodbye Eddie, you will have E flat, A flat, D flat, G flat, B flat, and E. E flat, it's the same as standard tuning, but all the strings are one note lower. If you don't know how to get to that tuning, I have made a video on how to do so, and you will find that link in the description as well. This song is in a six count, which is not that weird. We often say a one, two, three, four, five, six, but that's six, eight. This is more like six, four, which is a six count, but it feels more like a march. So instead of that nice swing, two, three, four, four, five, six. It's just a one, two, three, four, five, six. It feels like four, but it's six. It can be a little bit confusing. This first part is a great time to settle in the ah part, because what you're going to do is grab most of a D chord, but we don't care about the baby E string. It would be D minor if it was anything, but let's just leave that out of it. You're going to give this most of a D chord one strum. That's our first count of six and then your middle finger goes to the A string third fret for the next five beats. One, two, three, four, five, six. 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 And that should get you more comfortable with this sixth thing as we move forward. A better way of saying that might be, you know this song, that part goes right along with the ah-ahs. And if you want to get the fact that the vocals kind of, you know, make their way up in pitch as that ah rings out, you can bend that A string third fret ever so slightly as those last five beats press on. Makes it a little less pretty, a little more Alice in Chains. Now comes the riff, which continues to be in 6-4, but I don't think you'll have to think about that so much. I got everything that I could reasonably get for strummy chord guitar. I think it works pretty well, but you judge for yourself. Your pointer and ring fingers haven't moved yet, and they're going to continue not moving for a while. What we want to hear is the open D string, the A string 3rd fret, open, and then the D string 3rd fret. strum and make it sloppy, so what you'll get is, notice your middle finger takes care of all that motion. Then we want to hear the open D string twice more, so just two regular strums, and then your pointer finger is going to reach for that E string, low E string, first fret, for the conclusion of the first half of the riff. Congratulations, the second half of the riff is all exactly the same until the very last note where instead of playing that E string first fret, which might have been the hardest part of that first half, you're going to play the A string third fret. So, all the same, and then the open D string twice, and then land on that A string third fret. Put them both together. Of course, when the singing starts, it's the same guitar riff toned down a little bit. That's crazy to try to do that and sing at the same time. If someone else is singing this at your campfire, by all means, continue to do that. But for me, I'm just going to play D minor. Is she ready to know my frustrations? Perfectly good. You could take stuff off, you know, to make it fancy or not. Doesn't matter. 
For the chorus, you're going to play a B flat chord in the song. It's B flat suspended two, which is starting on the A string. One, three, three. The advantage to that is you do get the tinkly notes on the high strings there, but you could play regular B flat or a B flat power chord if neither of those suit your druthers, followed by an F chord of your choosing, big F, baby F, or F power chord, and then G. You're going to do that three times. If you wanted to do something in the place of that fill going into the chorus, you could play the D string open three, hammer on with your ring finger, followed by the same thing with your pinky finger on the G string, which are not the correct notes, but it's really convenient if you chose to do B flat suspended two, you see. is the right amount of syllables and who's going to call you out at your campfire, but if you wanted to be closer to the actual riff there, grab the D string second fret with your ring finger and slide it up to the third fret before you grab the G string second fret with your middle finger and the B string third fret with your pinky finger. Not so easy to hop back to B flat suspended two there, but a little easier to get back to regular B flat, so it depends what you think is important, the fill or the suspended two, or maybe you're just really cool and you can do both. But I'm not doing either of those things. I'm just gonna strum away on the D minor chord at the end of the singing. But you pick for yourself. For the breakdown, it's all D minor, counting in six again, you can just tinkle away on your D minor, but when he starts to sing, you can play a regular D minor for six beats. She, two, three, four, five, six, then your pointer finger comes off for six beats. Two, three, four, five, six, and then back on for six beats. If you want to follow the melody a little better, you can make that baby E string go one, three, open. One, two, three, four, five, six, and one, two, three, four, five, six, play D minor, whatever you want to do kind of in and around a D minor chord there is great. Or you could do this and follow along with the bass line in that part. Grab your most of a D chord and we're going to be doing the D string third fret routine. <laughs> I wasn't even planning on touching this for the campfire version, but it worked out really well. You'll know exactly what we're doing in just a second. You've got your most of a D chord going. Grab the D string third fret and pull it off to open, followed by pluck the G string just how it is, followed by D3, and then pluck right down your most of a D chord starting on the B string. The D string is now open. Give that chord two more strums end up on the D string third fret, that's the first half. And the second half of course is exactly the same until the very last note where instead of going to the D string third fret, you go to the A string third fret. And both of those together, I hope. satisfied. Those are all the pieces to rain when I die campfire as far as I'm concerned anyways. Thank you so much for being here. I hope that was fun and helpful and I will see you tomorrow with some very similar stuff. <laughs> Goodbye.